Hello, hello, hola, amigos, amigas. Welcome to Lima, Peru. Welcome to another series from home dedicated to the untold history of my beautiful country. It is a pleasure to have you all. Be welcome to my home. And my name is Vanessa. I am your Lima City Tour Guide. And as in every occasion, we are going to discuss about another historic fact related with Peru and Lima in this case. And also we are going to talk about how we celebrate Christmas in Peru, which is a really fun thing to talk about. Although let me tell you that today it is quite a, a difficult day for, for us here in Peru. Probably you haven't heard about this news yet, uh, but our president has just a few minutes ago closed the Congress of Peru. So it's been, uh, let's say, like a very, very hard for me you not know, to, to recover and, and, and put a smile on for, for this activity because we've been dealing in Peru with a lot of struggles related with uh, corrupted politicians since a long time ago. But in this occasion, we have a president that has been proven being corrupt since really the beginning. So he's not really over. He has more two or three more years ahead and unfortunately well a way he has found it to flank of or protect himself was finally closing the congress so this just happened about 10 minutes ago in national television and well um i'm just letting you know this because probably tonight you're going to be able to see in your uh different medias like a uh, news um say news channel uh, about this this story which is really breaking breaking news for us so I am not very sure what's going to be happening the rest of the day. He has decreed a coup d'etat for the night and also a, the closure, the immediate closing of the Congress. But we don't know what the uh, armed forces will be saying. Actually, they have a very important role in this moment because um, without uh, their support, our president cannot do really much. So we're going to see. And well, I also invite you to check on your uh, news tonight. Um, for now, it has been just a few minutes ago that this has happened. And probably the news are not yet uh, translated to English. So my dear friends, today, as you know, um, it is a hard day for Peruvians, but we are people that have overcome difficult moments uh, uh, during our history and we are strong and I'm sure things are going to get better uh, soon, especially for the for the good health of the nation. And especially because it's Christmas right, right around the corner coming. So today we're going to talk about Christmas and we're going to talk about the history of Christmas and the untold history of Christmas. So before I begin, I just took the first two minutes to explain a little bit what's happening here in Peru today in, in the news. So let me say hi to the people joining. I haven't really say hi to everybody. Sidel, hello. Michelle and Steve, hola, hola, amigos. Hello. Hi, Martin. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming again. Hola, Larry. Hello, Erja. Hi, Pamela. Hi, Adam. Mm, thanks for coming. Barbara, Dave, hello. Thanks for coming, amigos. It is really a pleasure to have you today. So I hope you are ready for today's uh, event. And we're going to change a little bit the color of the, you know, of the of the news because we're going to talk about Christmas and the holiday celebration of December in Peru. Uh, yes, it's been a while, Adam. I'm so happy you're back. I'm so happy you're here. So, amigos, if you have a question, as you know, you can make any questions here in the comment section in the chat zone. Um, and also, at the end, we're going to have some minutes for answering questions. So, if I was not able to answer a question uh, during the, the uh, slideshow presentation, um, I will be also saving some minutes at the end. Okay, so well, once again, my name is Vanessa and welcome to Lima, Peru. This is live uh, streamed uh, from the city, 
capital of Peru. So we're going to talk about today uh, the, the Christmas traditions in Peru, the history of Christmas in Peru. And also we are going to probably understand a lot of things of how different Christmas uh, is celebrated in Peru and uh, in different other parts of the world. Um, so today we are going to talk first about the history of Christmas and also some unique Christmas traditions to my country. But first of all, I would like to tell you how Christmas came to Peru, because as you know, Christmas is a Catholic celebration or basically is related with Christendom and uh, it is really spread over around the world. So the moment when Christmas came was at the time of the conquest, the Spanish conquest, the conquistadors came to Peru in the 16th century. Uh, but before that time, uh, Peru had its own sort of like a monarchy. We had our own kings, we had our own uh, ruling dynasties, we had our own traditions, our own languages also. So uh, the Spaniards, let's say, conquered this territory uh, and changed the culture and the traditions because they were imposing a new faith, a new religion. Uh, but we had our own before the coming of the conquistadors. So how was the December celebration, the December period uh, of, of the year, the, the end of the year for the pre-Hispanic societies, in particular for the Incas, because we have really more information about the Incas because the Incas were uh, directly um, sort of like um, overseen uh, uh, by the Spaniards. The Spaniards took notes about their behaviors, the way how they uh, live. And that's why also we have more information about their celebrations, right? So here I want to first tell you that the Incas had a, a very long uh, religious calendar that occupied the whole year. Uh, there were special uh, occasions, of course, for celebrating the sun or the moon or the dead. So um, the month of December was officially the first month of the year in the Incan calendar. And the first month of the year is connected also with the summer solstice. So the Capac Raimi was the party dedicated to the sun also. And as it was the first one of the year, it was also connected with the rainy season. The rainy season is very important in Peru because uh, without the rains, of course, not just the Andes, you know, like die because we need water, of course, for the agriculture. We are mainly an agricultural country, uh, but also the coast depends on the rains and the jungle as well depends on the rains. But in the case of the jungle, that is also rainforest. In the coast, we don't have any rain of our own. So we needed in the coast the rain of the Andes. So that's why December, which is the first uh, square you see in this section, is the big celebration of the sun. And there were different kinds of events happening in that part of the year, including, for example, processions of the dead, mummies that were, uh, of course, of the important leaders or were related, you know, with the important ruling families, the mummies were taken out of their tombs in processions. Right? So this was a time of a connection also with the dead, uh, a time when the priests offered to the dead chicha and celebrated with the dead as if they were alive. Um, we have here an image, a painting from uh, Guaman Poma de Ayala, which probably was made uh, in the beginning of the 17th century. Uh, we don't know exactly the year when these paintings were made, uh, but this series of paintings, which are really hundreds, they show how the, uh, well, back then mestizos, mixed blood, culturally mixed blood people of, of Peru perceive their past, their Inca past, but also the, their presence, the present that was Spanish because they were receiving the Spanish uh, culture back then in the 17th century. So, um, well, December was the first month of the year, as you know already, and the Capa Grimey was 
the most important celebration. But it was not just uh, that celebration happening in that time of the year, because there was another important festivity during the month of December, which it was called Huarachicui. The Huarachicui uh, was a sort of like um, a competition in which young boys, this was just for boys uh, that were around 12 years old, participated of. It was sort of like a military contest in which there were competitions uh, in which, for example, uh, the boys demonstrated how tough they were, how, how masculine they were. It was like a beginning or an initiation into an adulthood for these boys. Uh, by the way, the water was sort of like um, the, the shorts of, of the the clothing the boys used. That's the water. So the water chicoy was the festivity of the boys in which they demonstrated you know, how, you know, like uh, ready they were to be presented as adults. So it was a very important time of the year for uh, the Incas and the pre-Inca societies during the month of December. But when the Spaniards came, things changed completely, as you know, uh, because first of all, the religion of the Incas were not anymore uh, allowed. It was completely forbidden because the Spaniards came with the intention of changing the religion of people because they wanted to save the souls of the indigenous. Uh, and this was basically the, the, the reason they believed they were here in this territory, besides, you know, like the, the gold and the silver and, and also making, you know, this territory uh, like a part of the Spanish territory. So that's why during the colonial times, a bit of the justification of the presence of the Spaniards was the evangelization. And it was necessary that people will embrace the new faith as their own, not just uh, like by force. They really wanted the indigenous to embrace Catholic faith. It was hard for the Spaniards, of course, to do that because we had our own religion and a religion that really existed uh, like quite like pure and respected until in some parts of the country, the 19th century. Uh, then later, of course, the uh, missionaries went in different directions. Uh, the Franciscans, for example, the Jesuits, and they were later able to uh, bring the new words of, of the religion they carry uh, with them. But uh, it really took time for, for the Spanish to, to do that, even after the independence. Um, uh, so we have here an image of the main square of Lima. And notice also how bright and how active it is. So many people. We have people from different cultural backgrounds. We have Afro descendants. We have uh, Spanish descendants. We have indigenous people also. And in the, let's say, in the back part, we have the Cathedral of Lima. So the month of December, uh, which after the coming of the conquistadors ended up being the last month of the year. Remember that in the times of the Incas, it was the first month of the year for them. It was also a month of tremendous festivities. And the holidays of December, the Christmas season, started really early in the 7th of December because 7th of December was dedicated to the Immaculate Conception, the Virgin Mary. Uh, so the festivities lasted for one full month uh, and it, they ended on January the 6th. Uh, with the celebration of the wise men, which was very important festivity for us because Lima is the city of the kings, where originally that was the name of Lima, the city of kings. So the city of kings uh, was named after the Magi kings, the wise men. That's why uh, we ended up with this very important celebration in Lima um, really related with this uh, festivity, this religious festivity. Um, we have another, another painting from Guaman Poma de Ayala related with a uh, representation of the nativity. Uh, by the way, Navidad comes from the word natividad, uh, which means nativity. Also, uh, that's the, the word we use for Christmas in Latin America, Navidad. Um, so this is the month of the celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ. And we know something really curious that the first image of a baby Jesus that arrived to Peru uh, was given to the daughter of Francisco Pizarro, uh, the daughter of the conquistador Francisco Pizarro, Francisca actually was her name. She received the first 
image of baby Jesus. And uh, well, the, the celebration of Christmas happened right away after the coming of the conquistadors. The conquistadors came to Lima in the year 15. 35, and we know that in 1536 already, there was a mass celebrated for Christmas at the Cathedral of the City. Uh, you can see here uh, the Cathedral of Lima, by the way, painted. This is a, a scene from the 19th century. And you can see also lots of you know people partying and, and, and celebrating. This is a big uh, market that uh, used to be also by outside the cathedral for the Christmas season um, since the colonial times. No? So we had lots of people in Christmas like eating lots of local foods um, and eating also, let's say, the, the tamales and the uh, picarones and the anticuchos which are traditional staple foods, meals, uh, street foods of Lima in particular, but you can see them also in Peru. So um, we had a very important celebration on December uh, 24th, which was the Misa del Gallo or the Rooster's Mass. Uh, the Rooster's Mass happens every um December 24th, between 7 or 8 p.m., it depends, really variates a little bit. And it's a mass that is, let's say, the last one uh, before uh, Christmas, before uh, midnight. Mm -hmm. um, we still celebrate it nowadays, but it was established in the colonial times. Um, also, another important thing that happened during that time was uh, the Viceroy's pardon uh, for the Christmas season. Uh, so prisoners of, of the local jail were given a special pardon uh, for Christmas. Um, going back to the food, Uh, one of the most traditional meals during Christmas night in Lima was the empanadas. Uh, so you can see an empanada there. It was a very fast, like easy, let's say, to, to make meal. And also um, well, you could eat many also uh, by nighttime. But this is one of the many things we like to eat back in those old days. And by the way, we used to love like lots of sweets, sweet treats, um, so much that one Viceroy uh, decided to uh, ban sweets uh, <laughs> during Christmas because people eat too much of them. Um, so we're going now to pass to the time after the, <laughs> I can imagine the indigestions, right, Martin? <laughs> so um, the time after the independence. Now, the independence of Peru happened in the year 1821, but we were already, you know, like a, a Christian country mainly, no? Although we have our fusion, our cultural fusion, we have our different traditions that sometimes really are not, um, let's say like not clearly uh, Catholic and of course not clearly Incan, but together, you know, they have somehow created something unique. Um, we have, uh, we identify ourselves being Catholic. You can see just the several churches we have. We have in Lima, in the rest of Peru, in Arequipa, in Cusco, and you can you can tell. So that's another uh, picture of the main square of Lima or image of the main square of Lima. This one, of course, more modern. You can see this is from the 19th century. Uh, we can see churches like this is the bell tower of the uh, Dominicans uh, church. Uh, and also, well, all of this wealth you see here, like the beautiful churches, the beautiful main square, it is definitely connected with the wealth that we accumulated after the boom of the guano. The guano is the poop of the seabirds, the excrement of the seabirds that was exported as a fertilizer, a prime fertilizer. So we made a big deal of money thanks to the guano exportation. And it was a time of, you know, ephemeral wealth and also a time of lots of immigrants coming to Peru, bringing their own traditions. And so Christmas also was influenced by the immigration. And for example, I don't know if you can recognize this, this dessert, these cakes. Does, does anyone know the name of this cake, by the way? Would like to know. Muy bien, Martín. Panetone. In Peru, we call it paneton. Paneton. And the paneton 
o pan de Tony, o bread from Anton, uh, Antoine or Anthony, uh, is really, a, of course, an Italian tradition, and it arrived with the Italians. So you know already that Christmas was a, uh, sort of like a very, very Spanish. Uh, our tradition was set by the, the standards of the Spaniards because we couldn't really do many other things during Christmas because, first of all, our religion, uh, Incan religion was not allowed of course, during that time. It was a sacred period of the year. Um, but the only way the indigenous could continue, you know, like expressing their culture during this season was through the food. So that's how our, our food was so diverse during Christmas. Um, also the Afro-Peruvians, which they didn't bring their own religion with them because it was forbidden, but many of them accepted the Catholic faith. They also incorporated their own elements in our cuisine. But now we are an open country. We are independent. So we really are happy to receive new uh, foods. So we have here the panettone. Mm -hmm. And well, this is another dish that is now like, you know, staple, like it's the basic in every table in uh, Christmas night. Um, and that is the turkey. So we eat turkey, and it is curious, no? Because why we have turkey in Peru? Um, well, in December, November, you know, mo close months, um, are periods that are very important uh, for, especially North America, with the um, uh, this this special uh, moment gathering in North America. I think it's also Canada and the United States. Uh, that is the um, uh, oh, sorry, I forgot the name. Um, oh. It's coming, it's coming in a moment. Sorry, I have so many names in my mind to be thanked. Oh my gosh, I forgot. Thanksgiving, yes, Martin. <laughs> yes, to be thanked. Thanksgiving, thank you, Martin. So the Thanksgiving tradition, um, which was also very important uh, for people from North America, um, was sort of like a, a recreated here in Peru, but you know, it's not a big thing for us. It's not really culturally connected. So many people started to consume Turkey for Christmas too, uh, like people from North America. So they started to consume Turkey and people started to like that because before we ate lechon, which is pork, uh, it was more common to eat pork. Um, but well, it seems that people like better the turkey uh, from this th Thanksgiving and it stay here in our tradition. Um, but this is another important, uh, let's say, cultural element that came to Peru. Well, these are two, of course. First of all, uh, Santa Claus. And Santa Claus, by the way, do you know how we call Santa Claus in Peru? Do you know how the name we give to Santa Claus in Peru? Anyone? No? <laughs> well, it's usually known as Santa Claus, of course, in North America and many parts of the world. But in Peru, the name we give to Santa is Papa Noel. It's Papa Noel, right? And this also gives us an idea of where Papa Noel comes from, uh, like in the case of Peru. Uh, the tradition of Papa Noel came from, uh, from France, Oh, um, because the, we started to receive also images like uh, in the 19th century, mid 19th century about uh, Père Noël, oh, Père Noël, and that's how eventually we call it Papa Noël. Oh. Uh, so, well, for us, really, uh, Papa Noël or Santa Claus came really from France. <laughs> and we have also the Christmas tree, which is another interesting thing because uh, although we are in plain summer during the uh, Christmas season, we cover our Christmas tree with cotton to emulate snow in the tree. Uh, although it's very hot, hot, hot outside during the daytime, the day, especially the 24, 25 of December, everybody goes to the beach. But in the house, we recreate an ambience of winter because nothing of, of this Christmas idea really is, is connected like the way how we celebrate it nowadays with uh, nor our culture or our climate no? but but we like it because it was connected also with the idea that the good kids will receive presents so you were a good kid for all the year to finally receive at the end of the year a very special present right so i want to I'll go to uh, some fun uh, facts about Christmas and we're going to talk about 
eight Christmas traditions that are unique to Peru. So please prepare for what is coming. Remember that at the end of this uh, lecture, we will have some time for answering questions also um, in detail and, and maybe boarding some things I probably didn't uh, during the event. And maybe you have a question about. So what is the number one, you know, curious, unique tradition to Peru oh, that, that other countries don't have? Well, the Christmas night in Lima is really interesting. Um, and that is because, well, one never really knows that, that your culture is interesting or your tradition is interesting until you talk to people that are, are not from your country, you know? Like uh, for us, there are things that are really normal and then you realize that no, not really. For example, a Christmas dinner in Peru And it's, of course, Lima, I'm taking this example of Lima, but later I will take you to other parts of the country. In, in Lima, is at midnight, exactly at 12, right? So you are starving all the afternoon, like to eat something because, you know, you are hungry. You had lunch maybe at 12 or at one, And then, well, you know, dinner is going to come and it's going to be huge, huge. And we have... Like, this is the regular thing in the table in which you can see like a multicultural table. Uh, because for example, we'll have the turkey, you know, Ray, that comes from, you know, North America, this tradition. We copy, we have the panettone. We have a type of rice called arroz arabe. By the way, I will be cooking arroz arabe, Arab rice, <laughs> um, for my next cooking show. So if you want to learn how to do it, You have to come uh, with me and you have to also celebrate with me my two-year anniversary in Hago. So we're going to be doing this. Different kinds of salad. We have a salad that is very funny. It's called Russian salad, ensalada rusa. I have a friend. She is Russian uh, because she's a tour guide here in Peru, but she was born in Russia. And I asked her, uh, Barbara, is, is this really like a true Russian salad? And she said, no, we don't have that salad in Russia. <laughs> so we just call it Russian salad. I am not very sure why. I'm still investigating. <laughs> uh, so we have the panettone and we have also the chocolate, uh, which is another important uh, thing we drink in the, in the night. Just give me a second. There's a question. Is it like fasting during the day? Yes, Sidel. Um, we, well, no, not really because we eat a lot during the day you know usually when mom is cooking like for the for the dinner you know for the christmas dinner so she's making things during the day right so you have a little bit of this a little bit of the other and you can maybe give a you know eat a little bit of this or maybe you eat a, a one panettone before the one that is going to be eaten at night so there's really no rules of fasting and most of the times people really don't fast um we eat a lot during that day Um remember that our viceroy wanted to <laughs> stop us from eating, you know, sweets and candies because we ate a lot back in the old days. We still do it. Um, so, but the curious thing about this Christmas evening in Lima is because Lima is in the coast, you know, so it's very hot and uh, it's summertime, you know, December is, is very hot. And, and we have the tradition of drinking hot chocolate in, you know, like a, very hot summer night we are like sweating you know and we are drinking our hot chocolate with our panettone so it makes no sense but it seems that the tradition has started um also in the 19th century at the end of the 19th century when the uh, immigrants from europe started to come and it was already a tradition to drink hot chocolate Uh, in winter, uh, in that season there. So they continue this tradition here and we copy that. And that's why we do it still, no? because it's, of course, it's delicious hot chocolate. Um, we have also another thing that is very curious in our, in our uh, Christmas night in Lima which is the nativity sets um, that are really pretty. We will see this in a moment in detail, the nativity sets. But what we do is we cover the baby with a little clot uh, before Christmas. So usually, for example, at this time in the, in, the, in the year, people have already their nativity sets, right, in their houses. So what we do is we cover baby Jesus with a little clot, a white clot. And the reason is because Jesus is not 
yet here, uh, is, is to be born. So um, in the at, at midnight, uh, very late, before really starting to eat, uh, so we all reunite around the nativity set. And the little one of the house, if you have a four-year-old at house or three-year-old, will go to the uh, image of baby Jesus and will take the clot out. Uh, so that's the moment when baby Jesus is born exactly at midnight. So we represent this birth of Jesus, this magic birth of Jesus in every house exactly at midnight. No? Um, so, and we have another thing that is very crazy. We really don't go sleep too late usually, but Christmas night is really like you sleep at 3 a.m. usually. Because um, besides that, everybody, you know, outside the house is, you know, say hugging and kissing, you know, for Feliz Navidad, Merry Christmas, it's midnight. And that's the time when people open the presents. So we open the presents at midnight. So while some people are already sitting in the table, you know, like uh, starting to just pour the, the hot chocolate in their mugs, you know, and about to eat the turkey. Uh, the children are, you know, going straight to the to the tree and they open the Christmas presents and everything is craziness. And children don't sleep until 4 a.m. in the morning because they are playing with their new toys, right? So it's really interesting <laughs> to see that. Other tradition we have in Peru, by the way, is the chocolatada escolar. So what is this? Um, well, well, every December and usually very close to the to the closure of the of the Christmas uh, that's sorry of, of December um, a school year because you know December is summer for us so children you know go to the long vacation after the 18th of December so to finish to close this uh, year um, the parents and the school organizes what we call a chocolatada. So chocolate, chocolate, right, is the, the hot chocolate that is given to the kids, plus a panettone. Usually, this chocolatada is very traditional, especially in the low-income uh, neighborhoods of the country. It's not just in, in Lima. Although this picture was taken at the atrium of the house of the president of Peru. So this is the palace of the government. Oh, gracias, Martin. Thanks for your support, amiga. Uh, so children are drinking. Gracias, Larry. Uh, ch children are drinking merrily their their hot chocolate in a hot day. You can see they are all having like uh, short sleeves t-shirts uh, and and having a fun moment to to share with their friends. Right. The number three is the Niño Manuelito. The child of the thorn in Cusco. So what is the Niño Manuelito? Manuelito is the representation of Jesus Christ. Uh, Manuel or Emmanuel. Um, so it's a representation of uh, baby Jesus, but with a little thorn in the feet. Um, this representation is very, very typical from Cusco. Uh, these children uh, that are uh, usually in tears, as you can see, for example, here, this, this little Jesus, this little Manuelito has tears in his eye because he has a little thorn here incrustated in his feet. Um, it is also sort of a, a recreation uh, of the future passion of Jesus Christ. So it's like a, a is is receiving, you know, this baby Jesus uh, is receiving, uh, uh, let's say, the the advice of how he's going to die, crucified uh, um, in, in a cross. Um, so. But also, there is a really interesting story that says that uh, in the Andes of Peru, there was a little child who uh, was playing with baby Jesus uh, uh, that presented to him. And this baby Jesus, you know, had, you know, a falling and, and, and you know, like scratch his, his uh, legs, you know, and was crying. So this very good child, uh, seeing baby Jesus crying like this, he uh, incrustated a thorn in his own feet saying, uh, and also in tears saying, oh, don't be sad, my friend. I am also, you know, like uh, feeling, feeling the same pain as you do, right? So this is a tradition. This is a story from the Andes that is also connected with the little image of this uh, child in tears with the thorn. Uh, by the way, um, Manuelito, oh, this is the name of, of the child, the Niño Manuelito, uh, is a very famous representation 
And in the Cusco, you can get the image of Niño Manuelito in a big market that is called Santurantiqui in the main square of Cusco. I really hope uh, my friend Mike will be able to do, if this year it happens again, a tour to the Santurantiqui. It happens in the main square of Cusco, but the way Mike is our guide in, in Hay uh, from Hago in Cusco, that's the Cathedral of Cusco. That is the Church of the Jesuits of Cusco, right? The main square, Plaza de Armas. And you can see these stalls here where you can buy saints. So this is a big fair of saints. And you can buy your uh, Virgin Mary, you know, the, the shepherds, you know, uh, Joseph, and the baby Jesus also for your uh, nativity set of the year. Um, we have also the Pastoreada Navideña from the Peruvian jungle. Pastor is a shepherd, right? Uh, and uh, the idea of the Pastoreada is a big parade that uh, is organized by the communities in the jungle to uh, also reaffirmate their um, cultural tradition that is Catholic, uh, but also the, the fusion with their own traditional, um, let's say, culture, uh, even the fashion, how they dressed up. So it's a really interesting mix, very unique, in which you cannot really deny that how Catholic they believe they are and they feel, and that's really the most important thing, but also how proud they are of their own culture uh, from the jungle. So here you can see, well, in the parade, representations of the Virgin Mary, for example, which is really alive. These are people no, that are dressed up like the Virgin Mary or Joseph and, and a baby Jesus that is a really, really cutie um, there. And we have also, uh, in this case, for example, another representation of this uh, uh, Mary and Jesus seen with baby Jesus, but all traditionally dressed up in the fashion of the jungle of Peru. And remember, it is super hot in the jungle during this season, well, all year round, to be honest, for all of us. So um, it, it is a, a very special moment of reaffirmation, cultural reaffirmation uh, of their Catholic um, traditions. Um, we have here also, I will, I think, leave to the end some videos that I want to play for you. Um, but first, we're going to continue with the list. The Navidad Negra, the Black Christmas of Ica. Um, and, you know, we have a, a very important African, uh, Afro-descendant community, Peruvian, Afro-Peruvian community in Peru. Many Peruvians are Afro-descendants and they even don't know that because we are so mixed that you cannot really see the differences in uh, physically uh, between uh, Afro-Peruvians and indigenous Peruvians because we are all a mix, uh, uh, Chinese Peruvians. By the way, I am a little bit of, of all of these ethnicities. I have Asian, I have also indigenous, I have uh, African, and I have uh, European. So uh, I, I feel really proud of having all of these backgrounds in me. But well, the, the zone of Ica, <laughs> yes, yes, JV, gracias, Martin. Uh, the zone of Ica is the south coast of Peru, uh, is where um, the community was able to sort of like create a permaculture because uh, there uh, slavery was uh, kept until even after the abolishing of official abolition of slavery in the year 1854. So there were people who were still in a state of slaves until the beginnings of the 20th century there. Uh, there were no communications like in the old days, right? So that's that's why, and let me also, I think I have to play this one better. Uh, just give me a second because we're going to skip the app. And this is a really interesting video about how is the Black Christmas in Ica, where nowadays we have a still Afro-descendants that you can, you can tell they are Afro-descendants, uh, although they are also mixed, they have indigenous uh, blood as well. The Spaniards introduced the Catholic faith. In some cases it was false, but in other, it really was a natural thing. Uh, it was it was something that from the hearts people really embraced. 
and they mix their own African traditions in the case of, of many of these Afro-descendants, like the percussion, the music, you know, the, let's say, the uh, this, this vibe of happiness, right? And, um, and let's say, well, the, the, the idea also of the indigenous folklore as well and the concept of reciprocity from our indigenous uh, and then, well, the, the religion, right? So this is the, the beauty of the um, Black Christmas. That's how we call it, Navidad Negra uh, of Ica, uh, which is one of the things I want to do, you know, it, maybe next year when everything is going to be back to normal, is to show you live uh, Christmas, Black Christmas in Ica next year. So... The nativity sets inspire in our different cultural influences. Amigos, remember that we are a multicultural uh, country and we we take serious our Christmas uh, our nativity sets, no? Um, uh, or Belenes as well, they are called. Huh? Um, so these nativity scenes usually uh, include elements or bring elements that are related with our own uh, cultural backgrounds. So, uh, for example, I remember when we were going to the World Cup, uh, soccer World Cup. So, you know, uh, all the participants of the nativity set were using our <laughs> national uh, soccer t-shirt, uh, from football soccer t-shirt. Uh, we have also some nativity sets that have the traditional fashion from the uh, Andes, and some of them also from the jungle of Peru, like this, this little set here. Uh, we have the Afro-Peruvian nativity set with, you know, the, the pride of being an Afro-descendant also. And the nativity sets were really big until the time of my grandmother. I remember when she was still with us alive, she had like, she dedicated like, it was like five days, like before December started, like the last days of November to set the um, nativity set. And it was one whole corner of the house. Uh, and sometimes, you know, this is another nativity set. Unfortunately, I was not able to take a picture of the ones of my grandma. Um, but it was huge, almost like this one here. Oh, and, and you can see that we even decorate like, uh, like this, this section where the, uh, the, the nativity set will be, like looking like uh, mountains in, in the Andes, you know, with a, a special paper that is green painted, green color. Uh, so in that way, you can see the resulting is, is very realistic. <laughs> uh, so uh, even the churches also, they do that. The churches, they have a very special, very beautiful uh, uh, nativity set that we like to go see when we go to the, to the church, especially for the Misa del Gallo or the roster mass. Um, the Peruvian Santa Claus. <laughs> so you know already that Santa Claus came to Peru from France because we call it Papa Noel. So like Père Noel, right? Um, but also there was a time when Papa Noel was not even, you know, Santa Claus or Papa Noel or Père Noel. It was Taita Noel. So I will tell you what this means. Um, so here a little bit of uh, the names uh, given to Santa Claus around the world. Also remember in Peru is Papa Noel, uh, as well in many, many countries of Latin America. And here, you know, Père Noel in France. Uh -huh. um, so back in the 1970s, uh, the, the image of Papa Noel changed a lot because we had a, a sort of like a military period of our history. Oh, we were uh, submerged in a coup d'etat period, like a, a president, uh, Velasco, a military man, decided that all of these symbols, you know, from, you know, external symbols, European symbols, American symbols were not welcome in this country. So uh, it was made the decision to create a new version of Papa Noel. And this Peruvian Papa Noel will be called Taita Noel. Taita is a Quechua word and it means father. Oh, Taita. Oh, eh, so this was Father Noel, but in Quechua, pa Taita Noel, right? So you can see how eh, also eh, 
Santa Claus was expelled from Peru in this cover of the journal and journal seven days that was a famous journal of those days. We're talking about the uh, 70s. And now, well, Santa Claus has reinvented. Taita Noel didn't last it long. It lasted for a couple of years. Uh, people really like better Papa Noel. And Papa Noel, well, dresses up like this in Lima in particular because we are in summer uh, during the Christmas. So he must be really very, very hot. <laughs> and finally, we have the Christmas tree at the main square of Lima. This is another very special thing we have in in the in the city in this case in in, in lima uh, every year the christmas tree changes also oh, it's something you have to come to see if you are in lima in on december um every year there's a different motive for example this one here so different it's the same location but a different uh christmas tree this one is bright and this one here has different scenes from different parts of the country, from the Andes, from the jungle, different animals, right? So it's, it's a really curious thing. Uh, so, and of course, everything ends with the beautiful uh, fireworks uh, at the end of, you know, like the, the meal, the Christmas meal, uh, sorry, dinner, we have the uh, beautiful fireworks. So that's a little bit of how the Christmas uh, celebrations are in Peru and also some curiosities about Christmas in my country. Here's some information as always, um, my say bibliography and videography. If you want to give a look on the sources are used to create this uh, presentation. Thank you so, so much, amigos. Thank you so much for coming today to see me in Lima. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you so much for your tip support. As you know, it helps not just me uh, a lot. It also helps Hey Go to continue, you know, bringing the world closer together. It supports also the website or um, will continue existing. And as also, it helps us a lot because as you know, these are free tools. So we are not given any, any payment for these tools. We just make a, a little from your support. So if you wish to know how to support, I am activating a button that will help you, guide you to, to do it if, if you want to do it at the end of this event. Uh, and also before I pass to the questions, just to let you know that you can become also a sponsor of my channel uh, with a little fee every month uh, in my channel. You can not just help me to produce more content. Also, I will be giving you my books. I have two books that I am actually in process of making. Um, uh, one of them is a cookbook and the other one is a, a guidebook of Lima. They are both in English and you can get access to them uh, as my sponsors. So thank you so much. I hope you enjoy the event. And if there is any question, uh, I think I have some time to, we have some time to answer uh, the questions. Martin, muchas gracias. I, I'm so happy you enjoy it. You are all invited, by the way, to my celebration, uh, uh, two year uh, celebration anniversary uh, in Hago. And I have lots of different events coming, by the way um about christmas this month is going to be mainly about christmas but also i will be talking about some other things uh here and there uh so this is the christmas time the holiday time gracias pamela thank you so much i really appreciate that you've been here with me and well sending you lots of love from lima um please send us your positive energies because this is not really an easy time for the country. Um, if you were not at the beginning of the event, I explained that our president decided to close the Congress of Peru uh, just minutes before I started this event. So sorry if I am not so merry as happy as usually, but it, it's, it's been something very shocking. And well, I don't know how it's going to be for Peru, especially, you know, my business is tourism. I am a tour guide. So everything like this affects immediately our, our well, tourism. So, well, wish us luck. Sending you lots of love. Oh, and, and gracias. Thanks for your participation. Uh, Adam, thank you. Thank you. Oh, it's it's really, really wonderful to have you, Adam. I was missing you a lot. And well, really like we hope that Christmas is going to be, you know, like a, a peaceful Christmas, you know, and we, we, we need really 
finally a peaceful Christmas after the pandemic um, uh, that we have lived. So, well, thanks a lot, amigos. Gracias. And besos to you all. Uh, hope to see you. I think tomorrow I have another tour. You can also follow me in the upper part. There is a follow button if you wish to see. I think it's over here. <laughs> if you wish to see my, my upcoming events. Um, I have many, by the way. So you are you all are invited to come. See, ¿Sí? muchas gracias. JB, gracias. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy that you found this interesting and informative. Oh, interesting. Thank you so much. Gracias, JB, for sharing that with me. Muchas gracias. Gracias, Adam. Thanks for your support. Gracias, gracias, amigos. And take care. Have a lovely rest of the day. See you soon. Bye-bye. Chao, chao.